Welcome to Konoha Crush, a clandestine effort to exhaustively research and document events occurring in and around the village hidden in the leaves. I'm Ruby. I'm Gwen. Hi, Gwen. Uh, welcome to the podcast. We're doing the Hi. podcast again this week. Hi, Ruby. Hi, Gwen. I already said that. I'm saying it again. <laughs> we're doing the podcast. We're doing the podcast. My energy is like a little weird because we're recording a little later than usual and also on a different day than usual, so it's all fucked. But yeah, like... it's way fucked up. It should probably be fine, ultimately. It's probably fine. Um, how have you been? I have been all right. I've, I've, I've been up to some things, probably. I'm trying to remember what. I watched anime again, like, this week. Oh, exciting. We might have an anime segment for the second week in a row. Nice. I have, I have a couple of things that I want to talk about, too. All right. That's great. Let's, let's, uh, let's get into that. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll go first. Okay. Uh, because my, mine are going to be brief, I think. Um, so, of course, I watched all of the isekai that came out. Mm-hmm. Don't watch the skeleton one. Okay. I don't know what the skeleton one is, but I've noted. I mean, it's... Is it is the one that has skeleton in the name? Yeah, it's the, it's the one with the skeleton in it, yeah. Okay. I feel uh, like there's probably a lot of isekai that have skeletons in them, but, like, less of that have it in the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna get into that, it's just nasty. I was, like, tempted to open up Anachart to see what the skeleton one was, but that's a terrible idea for, like, a po- that's a bad podcasting habit. Okay, fine. I'll just fucking, like, say say the thing of it. Um, uh-huh. Like, literally frame one of the show as a sexual assault. Oh, which, one, one of those. Yeah, yeah, literally. I open, I, like, which I can only assume. I can only assume it is a sexual assault that is, like, thwarted by the cool, strong hero guy right away. Uh-huh. But it's, like, not an energy that you want to, like... No. That's just not what we're looking for here. Yeah, I didn't even watch that far to see it happen. Like, literally, I hit play when, oh, it's one of those, and close the tab. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, any, anything else? Any other isekai you want to hit on? Um, not isekai, but there are two shows that I'm excited about. Okay. Uh, the first one, which is the one that I have the least amount to say, because it was only one episode, and that is all I saw of it, is um, RPG Real Estate. Okay, I have no idea what this is. I'm like, I didn't really pay attention to what was coming out this season and still wound up watching a bunch of things. So, okay. like... so RPG Real Estate was really fucking cute. Um, it's about like a, like a country, like small town witch moving to the big city to like sell houses to fantasy characters. Uh-huh. Uh, and it was just adorable. Uh, the first episode was kind of like a trial run of like the format of the show in general because, you know, she moved and now she has to buy a house. So mm-hmm. she, like, went to her agency and, like, her, all of her co-workers, like, helped her find a place. And it was just adorable. I'm, I'm just imagining, like, a fantasy house hunters where you just, you're just you just showing an orc three houses every every week. And, like, he, he chooses one at the end and, that, and that's it. Yeah. One, one, of the, one of the apartments was, like, really small, but it was really cheap because it's in, like, the Adventurers District. And, uh-huh. like, one of the caveats was, like, if you live here, anybody's allowed to walk into your room and take shit. Oh. <laughs> that's pretty cute. Yeah, it's cute. And then the other thing <laughs> that I'm excited about is uh, the second season of a show that first came out in 2019. Okay. Uh, and that is the Demon Girl Next Door. Are you familiar? Oh, I know about that. Yeah, I didn't. I haven't actually watched it. It's like, but like I, I mean, I, I, I have not watched it, but like I, I've seen enough people post about it to have like a pretty solid idea of his vibe. Uh huh. It's. It's a cute little, like, slice-of-life comedy show about a girl who wakes up with demon horns, a tail, and an obligation to kill a magical girl. Mm-hmm. You know, and she's, she's bad at it, and, like, her and the magical girl become friends, and, like, the magical girl, like, helps her grow stronger and get better demon powers and stuff. It's adorable. It's cute. It's yeah, great. Yeah, it seems cute. And it's like a... I'm, I'm reading the comic. Like, I, I, I read ahead, and, like, it, it's getting a little bit gay. You know, a little bit gay, yeah. We, we, we like to, we, we, we're like finely t- attuned to when things get a little bit gay here on this podcast, I think. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the things people come to us for, or like at least one of the things they get when they come to this podcast, regardless of if they want it. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're just being true to ourselves. Uh, what have you watched this week? Okay, so I've watched like a bunch of things. I'm not going to talk about all of them. Some of them are like, I just, I just don't feel like I have a strong enough idea of like what, what the deal is there to like to talk about them yet. But I guess the things I want to hit on as I've watched. Um, so first I've watched a Birdie Wing Girls Golf Story. Yeah, I saw you posting about that. Yeah, have you seen that? Yeah, I did. I saw the first episode, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like it, it's like a, 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 a lot of... of 
Uh, of the shows I've been poking into, like this is definitely one of the more like modest premieres in terms of like how you know um did you just ha- how much uh like animation resources the production seems to have but like mm-hmm. i mean you know it, it is uh it is true to the form it is uh or i mean like it is as, as you might expect from the name it is a uh it is a sports anime about girls playing golf um it's like a thing i appreciate about it is it's just kind of getting immediately into like okay this is what like bullshit sports anime is you've got like you, you you've got your protagonist who is like she's a golf genius who's doing like extremely accurate like golf calculations to do ridiculous trick shots and uh and like she and she doesn't really care about golf but she like plays golf to you know get to get money and she's you know obviously going to draw various rivals to herself as she as she plays her like uncaring calculated golf and probably going to learn to love golf and it's just like I don't know it, it's fun when you get a sports anime about girls that is just like getting directly to the sports anime bullshit and not like yeah no totally i just i just had, I just had a lot of fun with it um I, I i saw a lot of people talking about it as like this this very this very weird and surprising show when they watched it but like it is kind of just a normal sports anime yeah i mean like i would i would i, I would even say it's like a little bit subdued yeah <laughs> i mean so, something i appreciate about it is that like the the characters in it are like basically adults yeah Something I couldn't help but notice about it is that it's extremely sponsored by Bandai Namco, which is why there's a a character mentions gunpla, and we get like a cut to like a box like a <laughs> box of a real gunpla. Yeah. <laughs> then she explains what gunpla are. Yep. But, uh, but it's, it's it's pretty fun. Um, and then uh, th- this is something you talked about last week, but now this week I've watched uh, the first two episodes of the Executioner and Her Way of Life. I'm at a pretty good time with that. Um, yeah, it's a good show. It's pretty it's pretty good so far. I'm it's one of those things where like i was pretty sure i knew the premise uh, of it going in and um I, I i mostly did i knew the thing about how the uh how the the, the main girl of it is like tasked to kill people who get isekai to her world mm-hmm. uh and i so i sort of assumed it was like a thing of like oh we don't want like i or, i sort of assumed in my mind it would be like a more direct like act in opposition to like the way that like isekai protagonists often go where they just kind of wind up being these sort of like like directly out of they just kind of wind up being these forces of like imperialism and like you know bringing their like cultural values and their like superior knowledge to the world or whatever. Yeah, and it actually winds up being more about oh these people have like magical powers that basically just go horribly wrong and fuck up the world. I, I, I was initially kind of disappointed about it, but there definitely seems to be like in a, a real attempt to like making their magical powers go wrong and fuck up the world like a visually interesting thing that is like you know it. It's definitely leaning into into that as like a fun fantasy concept, and it's definitely um, an expression of that that I feel like has forced me to confront like a deep weakness in myself. Is like there's a sequence in the second episode where the main girl's boss is like talking about the four great human errors, which were like the four things when uh when like with like these four catastrophic events in the past when various people who got isekai to this world uh, just kind of exploded or whatever yeah. and one of them she mentions is like the material room and i'm like fuck yes i wonder what the material <laughs> room is that's a great ominous proper dad <laughs> yeah it is and i'm i'm, I'm having about it i'm like probably or like you know I'm, I'm gonna keep watching it maybe we'll talk about it more as it goes on um yeah i'm i'm excited to see i'm excited to see that sword princess in action yeah that makes sense that you would feel that way <laughs> I, I can't, you know, I, I, I feel similarly, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm not surprised that this is a, a sentiment you're expressing on the podcast. The, the last thing is they, uh, a new Yu-Gi-Oh! anime just started airing, and I don't think this has come up on the podcast before, but I've watched a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. Mm-hmm. I had at one point watched all of it, but then I, like, fell off in the middle of Reigns, and then uh, I haven't watched all of Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore, but I do still, like, keep up with the new anime in the start. And the the thing that's really fascinating to me about this first episode is that um so so currently the Yu-Gi-Oh anime is based around like a new dual format called Rush Duels that's supposed to be like more accessible for younger children and not be like a big daunting mess of like continually layering mechanical complexity. Okay. And when the when the previous Rush Duels started, they were like really kind of paring back stuff in the first episode and it's like okay, our enemy has summoned the strongest monster of all, Blue Eyes White Dragon, a normal monster with 3000 attack. And no effects, and uh, predictably the way they the way they beat it is um, 
by using a monster with an effect to increase its attack power, to increase its attack power above 3,000, and then defeat Blue Eyes White Dragon. It's like a very simple, like, it is a very simple mechanical interaction within the card game. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this new season, they've taken that a step further to a degree that feels kind of ridiculous. um, Because they, they start with explaining, here's how, like... There's there's a character who is like an alien from space who doesn't know anything about the card game. Okay. And so they start from the extreme basics, like, here's how you open up a pack of cards. And here's what turns are. That's amazing. <laughs> and the the like throughout the entire duel in the first episode, nobody summons like a monster with an effect. Nobody like advanced summons a monster, so it's all just like low level guys with low attack and like no effects. And the like the, the the crux of the like climax of the first duel is like, oh, this guy summons a level four monster with sixteen hundred attack, and his opponent thought that level four monsters could only have fifteen hundred attack, so he gets to win. <laughs> and it's like it, it it just feels kind of astounding how how far they're going in the direction of like like the, we are starting from the absolute most basics. Everybody is going to be able to follow the card games in this show or else. And I guess we'll see how that holds up, but I was really sort of stunned by how heavily they went in that direction. That's so exciting. Oh, I might have to watch that. I mean, you know, I guess I don't know how much of a taste you have for, like, children's card game anime. It's definitely a thing I love, but, you know, it's, it feels like kind of an acquired taste. But, you know, if you watch it and enjoy it, let me know. I mean, I have a little bit of nostalgia for shit like that. You know, like, you know, I was a child at some point. Like, I guess, like, fucking Yu-Gi-Oh! on four kids was probably among my first anime ever. So, like, you know. Yeah, like the weird thing for me is that extremely wasn't the case. I didn't watch Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was a child. I didn't play Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was a child. Um, I just sort of came to it like as a thing I was doing like when I was in college, and I just watched all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. I, I love that about the dynamic between us, because I'm always just like, yeah, I, I, inter- I interacted with this shit as a kid and then fell off of it for a long time, and I'm coming back to it now. Yeah, then I'm like, I went insane about it in my, like, early 20s for some reason (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean i was mostly into dart i wasn't into dart as a kid like you know not not in the same way as everybody else because i didn't have television but like Mm -hmm. i was i would say it was part of my youth yeah okay but but speaking of how about we get to our episodes this week yeah okay all right ruby i have a question Mm -hmm. for you before we do that though okay what's your question so you see the title of episode 42 okay the the ultimate battle cha yeah, how much do you want me to put into that cha? As much as you want. As much as you feel comfortable with while we're recording at, like, midnight for you, after midnight for you. <laughs> yeah, okay, alright. It's almost 1am over there, I think. Uh-huh. Man, we really got into this late, huh? So you use your discretion. Okay. Episode 42, The Ultimate Battle, cha! Okay, that was pretty restrained, honestly. Sakura opens up with some clones to get a good sucker punch on Eno. Kakashi applauds her chakra control before Ino and Sakura break out into a full-on mirror match. Ten minutes later, the match is still going, but the girls are getting tired. Ino can't stand the prospect of Sakura being an even match for her, and Sakura just talks shit about her hair. So naturally, Ino cuts off her ponytail and hugs it across the ring, spreading hair everywhere. Ino extends her arms to perform the mind transfer jutsu, which everyone in the stands agrees is a bad call in the middle of a fight. Ino does the thing, and her body drops but Sakura remains unaffected. Right when everyone thinks Sakura has the win, she stumbles, tied down by Ino's hair being controlled by Chakra. Ino looks up, and now that Sakura is stationary, hits her with the mind transfer jutsu for real. Okay. Okay. So I guess the first thing I want to say as we get into our episodes this week is, like, I was pretty pleasantly surprised. I think all of our episodes this week have some stuff in them that looks pretty good. Yeah, totally. And like this, this episode like starts off with like a like a pretty solid bit of action with Sakura, you know, using doing her clones trick. Um, I think uh, I think it does like a, a bit to like elevate the the way the manga presents it, like sort of like really really, really play up and sell the degree with which like, the clones are being distracting and like make that hit land. I, I I do think it's also kind of struggling with with uh, with. Some, I do think it's also kind of struggling in some ways, like particularly when Eno gets punched, uh, the way that it's composited onto the background makes it look like she gets really small as she goes flying back. <laughs> did, did you did you pick up on this? I'm gonna post some images on her. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I don't. I don't think I really noticed that. Uh, though I am a big fan of Sakura's belittling punch. Yeah, look at this. 
Just just two images for you to compare and contrast. <laughs> she, she's like a foot tall. <laughs> what the fuck? That's amazing. It's wonderful. Man, I, could, like, I noticed that in the animation, I mean, like the animators there, it definitely just seemed like it's kind of an awkwardness that was introduced when like layering it over the background where they just didn't have like a background that actually um, matched how far back the animator made her slide. So it's kind of... Yeah. <laughs> but the end result is very funny. No, see, the tiles just grow gradually as they get towards the wall. The room is way bigger than it looks. <laughs> it's a perspective trick. Yeah. You know, everybody's pretty in- is pretty impressed with, uh, or I guess Kakashi is pretty impressed with Sakura's cool clone trick. And then we immediately cut away because there are ten minutes of the battle that just don't matter, I guess. Which doesn't seem like a great sign for, like, how... How good of a fight this is gonna be, but like I, I, I do wanna say something about the way that Kakashi was like Kakashi and Sakura were like talking about the chakra control aspect of it that mm-hmm. like uh I thought was really cool and that like we don't get a whole lot of in this, I don't think. Is that like they they were talking about like, yeah, I'm gonna move chakra to my legs now so that I could like move faster for a sec mm-hmm. and then put all of it into a punch and like that's that's just neat. I like it. I like I like how they're like moving power around like they're in a fucking spaceship, fucking everything on shields, you know? Like it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. I I I, I think it's probably the sort of thing that like that that it just winds up being like, oh, the characters are doing this without talking about it at this point in the show because it's not really like where the focus is at. But I, I do think it also winds up being like, oh yeah, Sakura's good at this, and this does sort of like play into how she fights when she eventually gets like more fights like quite a bit later in the show. Yeah, like, and I I like that for her character, right? Like, from from first glance, it's like, yeah, you don't have that much chakra capacity. Oh, wait, you're really good at moving all of your shit everywhere as soon as you need it. Mm-hmm. So you can like punch a lot harder than it like looks. Yeah, and then there's just, and then there's just like we cut over to a character and it's like, wow, it's been ten whole minutes. It's been ten whole minutes. We're all getting kind of bored with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, just not no no respect for for Sakura and Ito here. And like. So much of this fight is animated just to be, like, a perfect mirror match. Like, they're literally doing the exact same thing. Uh-huh. It's like, after ten minutes of that, yeah, like, at least somebody's like, you know what, that's actually pretty impressive. <laughs> like, Shikamaru's over there like, man, I gotta try really hard for that shit. <laughs> I, I couldn't punch anybody for ten minutes, damn. <laughs> I just give up. Yeah, and then, then it's the whole, like, argue moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a part of me that finds this really frustrating because it's like, oh, Sakura is, like, calling back to the shit that, like, everybody was saying to her back in the Forest of Death, and now she's, like, turning that around on Eno, and it's like... Yeah, but it just comes off, like, super mean and shitty. Yeah, no, I mean, like, that's, that's what I don't like about it, because it's, like, it's, like, it's mean and shitty when it was said to Sakura, and, like, it's mean and shitty to say it to Eno, but also, like, they both get a moment of, like, oh, I'm cutting off my hair now, and it's cool, and so, like... It's just trapping them in this terrible double bind of like, oh, the girls have to go to girl class and learn to perform femininity, and like Sakura's kind of bad at it, but also Sakura's like too invested in it, and Ito is too invested in it, and it's just like, yeah, I don't love that. Um, I, don't, I don't like it. I wish, I wish Ino did it unprompted. Mm-hmm. You know that that would be cool because then it's like it, it's it's something that Ino was like simmering on for a while, and now that things, you know, are getting a little bit heated, she's like, you know. Mm-hmm. And because she also uses that for her trick later. Um, yeah. But, like, but before that, she's like preparing to use her 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 mind transfer jutsu. And um, I, I, I've got to say, I think I think it's like a really really disrespectful move of Sakura to explain you know his technique in depth to the whole audience here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like. It's like so- so- Sakura, you know that like. It's like it's just like secret, right? You know, I mean, like probably everybody in the Leaf knows about the mind transfer jutsu to some extent. Um, but, like, there's guys from other villages here. Like, it, it just kind of feels like, hey, even if you beat me, I'm throwing you under the bus going forward, because everybody is going to know exactly how your shit works. <laughs> just rid- there's also, like, around this scene, there's also a moment of, like, in the, uh, in the Viz manga translation, um, mm-hmm. th- th- there's a moment where, like, the inconsistency with what does and doesn't get tra- get translated was kind of driving me like nuts because uh with within a couple pages of each other uh shikamaru refers to his own jutsu as his me and my shadow technique and somebody calls Ino's jutsu the shintenshin and it's like come <laughs> on guys just 
<laughs> just choose some way to be doing this. This is <laughs> this is intolerable. Just pick one. Just pick just pick one, please. Uh, Sakura gets extremely played. Um, oh yeah. Like basically, I just walked right into that one. Well, that's like a pretty cool trick on on Eno's end, I think. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm gonna fake using this move that knocks me out, so you lower your guard. It's perfect. Especially after you know you get your opponent's like, yeah, you're gonna do this trick. It's gonna knock you out, and I'm I fully believe this is gonna happen because I I know how your jutsu works. I've just explained it to everybody. Yeah, I'm just gonna dodge it. I'm gonna dodge your ghost. Also, there's like a moment in here where like where where, where Shikamaru is talking about how um the the, the mind transfer jutsu is meant to be used in tandem with his jutsu as part of the like Ino Shikacho formation. And, and like, if you know that, what the fuck were you guys doing back in the forest of death there? Come <laughs> well, on. That, that, that is something he heard when they turned their scrolls in. <laughs> like, they're just like, hey, you know, you know that you're, you know that like, the, this is like a, like a historical battle formation with the leaf for a reason, right? Like, this is, this is something that works together. You don't just each do your own thing and then like, lose. I don't know. Sorry if we get just, is getting stuck on that again. I'm ready to move on to the next half of this episode if you are. Yeah, okay. Ino, in Sakura's body, goes to announce her surrender. But Naruto interrupts, not really getting the whole mind transfer thing. He tries to talk Sakura out of it. But at hearing Naruto's voice, Ino stumbles and clutches her head. Sakura's will fights through and announces that she's not going to withdraw. And Ino, wanting to get back out of the situation as fast as possible, releases the mind transfer jutsu. And we get right back to the mirror match, where they knock each other out at the same time, meaning neither of them move forward in the exams. The next match is announced... It's 10-10 versus Tamari, and when Sakura comes to, Ino fills her in on the results and hands over her headband. Somehow, it's still not gay. All right, so yeah, once, once we come back from the, uh, the the commercial break on this episode, uh, we we immediately get uh, we, we immediately get Kakashi what, like explaining the mind transfer jutsu to Naruto, which uh, like it, it's sort of a carryover from the manga because like that's like you know the, the before the commercial break was the end of one chapter and the uh after it is the beginning of the, the beginning of the next mm-hmm. so like it kind of it, it makes a little sense to have that there when like it's been a week so you want to quickly reapprise people of the situation but it definitely feels very silly it was like oh a minute ago sakura just said all of this shit and naruto i guess just wasn't paying attention <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and kakashi is like explaining it again Apparently he's still not paying attention. <laughs> he's like, okay, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk soccer out of this because soccer is still in control. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I love a stupid boy. You see, he's wonderful. He doesn't know anything. Yeah, we we we, we cut down back down to the arena and uh, you know like, you know is stopped from uh, from con- from conceding by like. Like the, the, we we get the image of like the, the towering inner Sakura like fucking clutching uh, like you know in her hands, um, because on, on the mental plane Sakura also has be smalling powers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And like banishes her out. And like this is one of those things about Naruto that has like been haunting me <laughs> for years. <laughs> Yeah. Because everybody watching the fight is, like, immediately trying to rationalize, like, oh, I, I guess, you know, just used a lot of chakra and she was really tired and, like, Nar- Naruto encouraged her and, like, the, all of that just added up together to, like, make a, to, to, just, to just make it work out this way. Everybody's like, yeah, this is pretty normal. But, you know, down on the ground is like, hey, Sakura, what the hell? Why do you have two consciousnesses in you? What's going on? <laughs> Yeah, and then we never talk about it again. It never comes up again. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And then we, we get the the bit where they punch each other and they get mutually knocked out. I think this cut looks like really good. Um, oh yeah, especially the bit like the, where the headbands are like flipping back and like landing on the ground. There's like this great sense of like power, like there's like this great like trailing fabric animation and like it's just. Hey, can I say it's so it's so funny that they knock their headbands off because of like what it like you know meant or whatever, and they and they put the headbands on again back to how they were before. So I guess they're not real ninja. <laughs> we'll try again later. Uh, it's it, so an interesting thing about that cut actually is that um within the last week uh some uh, somebody has made like a pretty credible case for uh like who the animator is responsible for that. Like, it wasn't, like... Like, like the, the, there were some guesses about who, who who did it, but, like, this is, like, mm-hmm. a... The, 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 there's, like, a thread where they go into, like, in detail and, like, outline what a... 
like I outlined the reasoning, but yeah, so thanks to uh, Purple Geth on Twitter, who doesn't listen to this podcast, I'm certain, is like more qualified to talk about this stuff than I am. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, we, we know, or like we are, we can say with some degree of certainty that this cut is uh, animated by Toshi Sakaya. Woo! That's, 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 always, that's always cool to see. I, I, I just want to talk about that because it was like, the, the timing of it was very interesting to me that it worked out this way. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, that's actually kind of amazing. <laughs> right. Back, back to the episode. Yeah, um, back, back to the episode. Back to the shit that matters. They get carried out of the arena, and like, you know, after a lot of battles, we get everybody just sort of standing around commenting about how impressive it is. But at this fight, like, it is just sort of the people who know soccer, and you know, everybody else is checked out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, the sad siblings aren't fucking like, paying attention to this. And then you stop caring about girls 30 minutes ago. <laughs> So it's like it is just like Kakashi and Asuma and like Naruto and Shikamaru and Choji and Rock Lee and everybody else doesn't care, but they're all like, "Oh, that was awesome! That's that's great for them. I'm I'm glad they got this worked out. This feels like it was really emotionally healthy for them ultimately." <laughs> <laughs> and then Kakashi, extremely backhandedly, is like, "Man, I think even Sakura, who sucks ass, has grown this much." <laughs> Like, the line of this was like Sakura who didn't have what it took and it's like come on man <laughs> come the fuck on dude I have a little more faith in her so this show this show doesn't like women no no it doesn't Gwen no but but I do you do yeah I, I know do. this about you yeah and you know I I, I think you know I, I I think I am pretty like checked in as far as like vibes go Mm -hmm. and i want to say you know is still acting really gay right now i mean the part where she's like oh soccer you've become a beautiful flower yeah yeah it's it still feels pretty gay (laughs) and you know they they make sure to play off like oh but this is about us fighting over sasuke but like come on now come on now I mean, yeah, maybe you do get really jealous when you see Sakura and Sasuke together. Yeah. Like, maybe, maybe, it's, maybe this is, you know, just trying to play it off. I was like, oh, but actually, I like a boy still. Uh, and Sakura <laughs> is a straight ally who doesn't who doesn't know anything. Uh-huh. So, yeah. She's like, yeah, that's right. I want I want that boy. You know, it's like, yeah, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> just mad about something else entirely, but, you know, trying to... We're just, we're just sort of like a creating a world where everybody is sadder and gayer in our, in our conversations about Naruto here. <laughs> Except Sakura. <laughs> Except Sakura. <laughs> yeah, right, because Sasuke is gay. Uh-huh. Obviously. Obviously. And like, you know, God, that, that must be rough for him. <sighs> I mean, we'll, we'll talk about that when Boruto rolls around, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so then... You know, the, the episode closes, we hear that, like, 10-10 and Jamari are about to fight. Um, and they, I guess we should move on. Do, do you want to move on to the next episode and see how that goes? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about a bullshit fight. <laughs> God, this this fight fucking sucks. Episode 43, Killer Konoichi and Shiki Shikamaru. Rock Lee and Mike Guy cheer 10 on as she moves to keep her distance. Tamari taunts her into attacking, but all of her shuriken miss. Shikamaru calls it right away that Tenten loses, and Tenten circles around to huck a bunch more stuff at Tamari, but she blows him out of the air with her fan. Tenten gets desperate and pulls out two scrolls to perform Rising Twin Dragons, which looks and sounds pretty cool, all things considered, but ultimately results in just hucking more weapons at Tamari, which doesn't work. Tenten uses wires to control the weapons and huck them at Tamari again, but Tamari just blows them away again. Tamari's on the offensive now and kicks Tenten up into the air with her wind scythe jutsu. She hangs up there, getting cut by the air for a minute, before falling spine first on Tamari's closed fan. The match is over. Sakura thanks Naruto for yelling at her during the match, and the next round is announced. It's Shikamaru versus Keen. Okay, so to give you all a picture, like people who haven't like looked at the manga recently, like how much of this fight is based in the manga, um, all we get is like, uh, Sakura and, you know, are having a conversation from the end of the previous episode, and they look up, and it is, like, already the shot of, uh, Tenten, like, like, knocked out, spine, like, like, spine first on, t- on Tamari's fan. <laughs> 
I like genuinely, I think that might be like less brutal for Ted Ted. That might be like that might be like less unfair to her yeah. than what we get here. Like they, they they're sort of trying, but they're like they, I, they're just not pulling it off. Like the fight starts and like the third Okage is watching. He's like, yeah, Ten Ten, you're really standing there and <laughs> prepared to react. You're doing so good at standing. You could do anything or nothing right now. It's so bad. Like, the first interaction in the fight is, oh, this character can knock things out of the air that I throw at her. Uh-huh. And then that is the only thing she tries for the rest of the match. Right, like, like so, like, God. The thing I can't get over is the fight starts by the guy and be like, oh, she's so ready to react. And then Tamari's like, oh, you're trying to react? Why don't you just try to attack me instead? And then she, like, immediately drops that and, like, throws sh- her shuriken and they don't hit. I think, like, off in the stands, we've got fucking team guy offering the extremely helpful commentary of, oh, that's weird. Ted Ted always hits things that don't move and don't do anything. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Woo. Woo. Like, Ted Ted is supposed to be, like, a weapons expert, right? Yeah, I mean, we don't, like, I don't think there's a- anybody has said what Ten Ten's deal is, really, up to this point. But, like, that is definitely the the impression in the few times where they do, they do talk about it. I wish they cut her just, like, a little bit of slack. And just, like, m- maybe after, like, okay, I threw the shuriken, I didn't see what happened, but it fucked up. I'm gonna circle around and, like, throw more. Mm-hmm. And then when the fan was revealed, that's when she's like, okay, I can't throw things anymore. Mm-hmm. And she moves in for, like, a melee thing. Yeah, and then like Tamari is like, actually, I've got like, like I've got like range shit that I can attack you with while you're doing trying to like hit me with me- like trying to get in melee range. So like, yeah, you know, like if if if, if they just like <laughs> if they just like played it more directly, like Ten Ten was kind of overwhelmed by how strong Tamari was and didn't like have Ten Ten do a bunch of bullshit that sucks repeatedly. <laughs> yeah, like <sighs> or 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 even, and I understand. That this maybe cuts down the time on the episode really uh, a decent amount. If it's just the, the the brutal like, yeah, okay, attack me. The shuriken like get knocked out of the air or whatever the first time, and then Tamari's like, okay, my turn. And then we cut all the way to the end where she gets knocked up into the air, cut up, and then lands on the lands on the fan. Mm-hmm. If it's just like, okay, haha, that was funny. I'm gonna end this really fast. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I can sort of get being like, okay, the first time I'm going to, like, launch a bunch of shit out of her to, like, see if I can get a clearer picture of what's going on and, like, see if I can get something past her guard, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, I, I, like when she does that the first time, it's like, okay, I, I think I see, like, I'm, I'm not completely checked out yet. And there's, like, a pretty cool cut of Tamari where she's, like, spinning there for the fan to reflect it where you get these, like... There's this like really skim- simple kind of sketchy like background animation where we just get the like geometric patterns of the floor kind of like turning slightly as uh, Tamari like whirls the fan around. Um, mm-hmm. It's all like my favorite cut of the episode, and 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 it's like okay, how how, how is Tenten going to go from here? And the answer is that she's going to throw twice as many things directly at Tamari, and then she's going to pull them up by by the threads. And you would think that maybe. Maybe by, by trying to maneuver all of these weapons that were on the floor around Tamari, you would do something other than pick them up and throw them directly front on at Tamari. But no. Yeah. Um. Hey. <laughs> you 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 know about Soul Eater, right? Yeah. Uh. You know the character Mifune? Yeah. With uh, the fucking infinite one sword style. Yeah. I know about Mifune, the coolest fucking guy ever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you know how like Tamari throws a bunch of weapons, or not Tamari? Fucking Ten Ten throws a bunch of weapons. And Tamari knocks them out of the air and they spread all around the floor and everything. Uh-huh. Th- that's a good opportunity for Ten Ten to go, okay, range attacks aren't going to work. So she just, like, rapid fire keeps picking up different weapons off the floor to try and overwhelm Tamari. Mm-hmm. Could be cool. Could be a cool thing that totally makes sense for Ten Ten to be able to do because she's the bitch that's like, yeah, I know how to use all the weapons. I know how to use every weapon. Yeah. You know, and it and it makes sense for something like a flail to be included in her range attack, if it, if it was just the setup for there to be a flail laying around so that she could mm-hmm. pull a flail out of like off the floor really quick and use it, you know, as like a trick, mm-hmm. you know, as like a trick that like ninjas do. Yeah, like there's a lot there's a lot of tricks at this stage of the show, but uh... yeah, I don't know. I think that's just kind of like an obvious direction to take that. Uh huh. It's it's really. It's really just kind of the least interesting direction they could have gone in, I feel. 
The other thing about this fight that's really mysterious to me is like, Tamari's got her whole thing of like, all right, once all three stars on the span appear, it's over for you. And when she does, when, when all three stars on the fan appear, she like spins her fan around and like disappears and then appears again in the air, sitting on her fan, and then floats down to where she was standing before? <laughs> Why did she do that? <laughs> she just wanted to show off. I mean, she just does her attack from where she was standing before. <laughs> I can't believe how lame this fight is. <laughs> it's so fucking bad. And like, like, it looked cool when she disappeared behind the fan. Right, everything after that, kind of, like, I just sort of assume it's like, oh, she can, like, appear in the sky and then do her attack? She can, like, I can't, like, she goes back to, like, exactly where she was standing before. Yeah, like, even, even just, like, appear behind her to, like, surprise Ten-Ten so she can knock her into the air when she has, like, unstable footing, even. Mm-hmm. No, I'm just gonna, like, meander around, floating around on the fan for a sec. I'm gonna do a party trick for a moment. <laughs> Land exactly where I was standing and then attack. And, like, really adding insult to injury, like, after the fight is over, um, like, we, we quickly realize that the narrative purpose of this fight has basically nothing to do with any of these characters. It's more about, like, Rock Lee getting pissed at how disrespectful Tamari is being after the fight, and then that being, like, fuel for, like, the, the Rock Lee and Gara fight later. Mm-hmm. Remember how Ten Ten was supposed to be, like, of the girls, like, the cool one? Yeah... Yeah, remember how she was the one that was all like, it's not because they're girls, they just suck at fighting. Mm-hmm. I fucking, I fucking hate this shit. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not done respecting women yet. We're not done disrespecting women yet. Do you want to go to the next half of this episode? <laughs> yeah, okay. Shikamaru opens up with a shadow possession jutsu, which Keen avoids and hucks Senban with bells tied to them at Shikamaru. Shikamaru avoids more Senban before being tricked by the bells ring behind him and takes a hit. The wound is no big deal, but he drops to his knees anyway. Keen explains that her bells make a special sound that causes hallucinations. Shikamaru struggles to move and sees a bunch of hallucinatory Keens standing around the real one. She hits him with more Senban, and right before she ends the fight, she locks up. Shikamaru sent his shadow up under the lion Keen used to control her bells and got her with his jutsu. Shikamaru and the shadow possessed Keen throw shuriken at each other. They both lean back fast to avoid it, and Keen hits her head on the wall, getting knocked out in the process. The next match is declared. It's Naruto versus Kiba. So I guess this is our first, like, Shikamaru fight, which is, like... There's not, like, a ton of these in total, but I feel like they're definitely kind of an iconic thing in Naruto. Like, because Shikamaru's the guy who's got, like, cool, like, strategy and tricks and stuff. Right, because, like, Shikamaru's the guy that stands around losing until, oops, it was all a setup to get you caught by my jutsu. Mm-hmm. He's like, he's, like the, he's, like, the smart guy who's actually a few steps ahead, but he, like, doesn't, like, applying himself, and everybody loves him. And, like, I'm not gonna pretend I don't like Shikamaru, I think he's, like, a huge prick, especially at this stage of the show. Yeah. But, like, I think I'm sort of surprised by is how much Shikamaru, like, doesn't like girls. <laughs> like, not in a way that, that, that implies he's gay, he just is kind of, like, a little misogynist twerp. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, he's also wearing the mesh shirt right now, so, like, you know. But, like, he's like, oh, I, I I hate fighting girls. Why does it have to be a girl I'm fighting? How am I supposed to get out of about this? Like, Shikamaru's the motherfucker who, like... Gets like he starts complaining about it when there's a girl in his Overwatch ranked game, and also in Boruto he grows up and wears a cock ring necklace. So like, uh, he, grows up, he wears a what? He grows up and wears a cock ring necklace. <laughs> oh, you know I've never thought about it in those terms. Look, all I'm saying is he doesn't like girls. <laughs> okay, see, in my we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves here a little bit, but in my mind Shikamaru is like one of the few. uh convincingly heterosexual characters in Naruto because his deal is that he's like kind of annoyed by by like girls for a while as a teen and then he realizes that girls can be mean to him and he's like oh shit this changes everything yeah sorry I don't make the rules anyway he, he literally just wears a cock ring necklace <laughs> but he's just being like a real fucking dickhead at this point he's just oh. like 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 he starts throwing her like needles with bells on him he's like ah I know exactly what your shit is you you throw you you you, th- you, th- you throw needles with bells on them, and you throw needles without bells on them, and that that tricks me. And uh, you know, to to, to be f- to be fair to him, she does indeed throw some needles without bells on them, and some needles with bells on them. Yeah, and uh, you know, he's 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 got it mostly figured out, and then she's got her cool trick where actually she's got strings on some of the bells, mm-hmm. and so that 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 distracts him, and like you know, um, 
Yeah, and also the bells are like weird cognito hazard bells that just make you hallucinate. <laughs> yeah, that's an anime original thing, like they're of them desperately trying to give Keen anything more. Because like w- when you look at this fight as a whole, it's like, okay, this is like a tight little exchange, right? Like Keen pulls the string on the bells and that's like her getting the upper hand, but then the string on the bells is like how Shikamaru turns it around by like hiding a shadow down there. But, like, if you look at it a little more detail, it's like, oh, like, Keen doesn't have anything but what she needs to, like, set up Shikamaru for this win. And yeah. so they try, they try like, a little harder to give her, like, these weird, like, genjutsu bells. Uh-huh. Except they have no bearing on how the fight plays out, because it doesn't, like, interfere with him doing his trick at all. It just kind of, like... Yeah, it just makes him go, like, ugh, for, like, a sec before he does the trick. It's bad. It's not great. It's, like, you know, the, the, I, 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 st- I still think the, uh, the, 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 the trick is pretty cute, but, like, it's, it's, it's not great for Keen. It's just, like, oh, th- this is, there's nothing about this character that is considered at all. It's just, like, all right, it's time to put Shikamaru over. Uh, who we got in this room? Oh, Keen? She's not, she's not anybody. We can just, uh, discard her quick. Yeah, right, like, this would be neat in, like, a much earlier part of the show when, like, the the level is that much lower, right? But not for tuning exam shit, you know? It's like, why, why didn't Orochimaru give her anything? She at least gave, like, Orochimaru at least gave Zaku gross arms and, like, Dosu his, like, sonic blaster thing. I mean, do you really want me to answer that? Orochimaru uh, doesn't like girls. <laughs> Damn it. I, I I do think it's pr- pretty fun how Shikamaru immediately becomes like the smuggest little bastard on earth when he wins. Oh yeah, like that's like a, he does like a flip for no reason. Like it's like oh, I hate putting any extra effort to anything. Just does a little fucking his gay little flip and he like walks out of the ring and he's like, yeah, that's right, I'm cool. <laughs> um. Also, can I say Shikamaru like the 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 thing where like the the shadow possession like oh you both like grab a shuriken and stuff like. You could just grab a senbon that you don't have and then like mime it up to your neck and just like, okay, forfeit. Right? I feel, I, f- I feel like the trick where you throw a shuriken and then dodge it in order to make Keen hit her head on the back wall is a little bit silly. Yeah, but you know, maybe he's kind of a silly guy. Maybe he likes it when things are a little bit silly. Yeah, I just, fe- I just feel like that is a little bit like Rube Goldberg-y for when... <laughs> Like, and like, what are the chances that you even have your fucking shuriken pouches in the in the same spot anyway, right? Like, is that a standardized thing? I feel like there was, like, a line of dialogue earlier about how the, the Nara clan members often have their shuriken pouches in, like, unconventional places specifically to avoid that. But, like, I guess Shikamaru, like, has his, ha- has his, like, shuriken pouch in, like, a very standard place to, like, allow him to do Rube Goldberg shit. Like, he doesn't want to give himself an easy out. <laughs> right. And, like, I'm just thinking I'm just thinking of the logistics, right? Because, like, okay, so, like, even if your shuriken pouches are in the same spot, right, you're in a fight with somebody. Even if the pouches are in the same spot, generally, like, the, the, the shuriken that, like, settled inside wouldn't be. I, I, <laughs> I think we're getting, like, a little bit of this here, Gwen. No, I know. But the, like, three extra steps it took to get her out of the fight made me look closely at the whole premise, and it's just... You're just not feeling it, huh? I think I'm more willing to, to like, ignore, ignore its faults than you are, but it's definitely got some faults. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 And, like, I don't, I don't think it's a fault, necessarily. It's just a little bit silly under scrutiny. Yeah, and before the, before the next matchup has, uh... It's decided we get, like, this brief scene of, like, Kiba running down everybody who's left in the room, and he's like, oh, shit, there's almost no jobbers left in here. <laughs> like you get kind of a dose he's like ah so I'm the last one left huh hope I'm not a jobber <laughs> I, I'm like I'm like surprisingly invested in Dosu at this point even knowing like this, is, this isn't gonna go that much farther for him but like you know I, I I really do like his position of like oh shit like I think my boss doesn't care about me at all actually but I don't know what else to do here so <laughs> I might as well just take this as far as I can I'm like I'm I'm, I'm interested to see if we get if it, like how how much more of him we get before he goes out. Yeah, yeah, I'm 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 excited because he goes out like a chump. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you ready to move on to the next episode? For sure. All right. Episode forty four: Akamaru Unleashed. Who's top dog now? Naruto has a problem with dogs in the ring, and Kiba remembers how much of a joke Naruto used to be. 
The fight starts, and Kiba uses beast mimicry to grow claws and stuff before elbow checking Naruto, sending him flying. Naruto gets up, and Sakura remembers every time Naruto's ever been cool. Naruto taunts Kiba into fighting with Akamaru. Kiba throws smoke bombs and rushes him. Naruto takes some hits before fleeing the cloud, only to be pounced on by Akamaru and forced back in. When the smoke clears, Naruto's on the ground, and Akamaru returns to Kiba, only to growl and jump up to bite him. I like Kiba a lot. K- Kiba's pretty fun. Um, I have, like... Before we get into the fight proper, I, I just kind of want to, like, talk about, like, the, um... Like, 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 I guess what the, the, the presence of, like, the Naruto and Kiba matchup, like, is is doing for this episode. Um, and, like, sort of work through that. Um, because, like, before I, um... Like, like, before we talked about Naruto and Kiba, there's, like, that scene at the beginning of the tuning exams where, like, they're both basically the same guy and neither of them realize it and they're both kind of pissed off about each other. Yeah. And that's, like, really funny. I don't know how dramatically compelling it is on its own. Um, and, and it definitely feels like, you know, Masashi Kishimoto didn't think that was quite enough, so he really just kind of turns up the dial on how much of, like, a bully Kiba is. Yeah. Which I guess is fine. Um, but the, 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 there's definitely parts of this fight that, like, feel like they're, they're like, really trying hard to be like, okay, we've given Naruto too much cool shit lately, we need to remind you that he's an underdog. Yeah, that, that, that's kind of what this fight feels to me. It feels like to me on some level. But like you know, he's gonna turn around anyway. Like not Naruto or? Yeah, Naruto. Yeah. I don't know. I, f- I, f- I feel like this is a good opportunity for like I I, I don't know. I don't, I don't like the bully characterization so much. Yeah, it it, it feels like it's kind of like I, I mean part part of this is because like oh I, I I have Kiba in my mind as like one of the friends. And so it just feels kind of incongruous for him to be like, I, I, that's right, I hate Naruto and I think he sucks. <laughs> to everybody in the room who is now like, yeah, Naruto sucks really badly. It, it definitely feels a little contrived to me. And also before we get into the fight proper, this episode sort of like, ha- like, like Naruto starts this fight being like, hey, is that allowed about Kiba his dog? And it, it made me realize like, Nar- this is something that Naruto keeps doing. He keeps trying to get people disqualified. Like he did it earlier with Konkuro. He does it again later in this episode. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I guess it's it's pretty funny that he's like the he's like you know the the rebellious kid who's like painting graffiti on the Hokage face and stuff. But he's also like, hey, this guy breaking the rules is that okay? <laughs> also, like, dude, you're the kid with the fucking demon seal, and you shut up. <laughs> yeah, we're not talking about what's not allowed here. I mean, you'd probably get disqualified pretty fast if that if you started like glowing orange. I mean, you're one of the kids with the demon sealed in you. Shut up. <laughs> one of the two kids in this room with the demon sealed in you. No, I don't think we know that about Gara yet. No, we don't. But, you know, the... Well, like, like after Naruto fails to get Kiba disqualified for having a dog, Kiba's like, I don't even need my dog, though. And also, I'm going to take you out in one hit. And everybody in the room is just like, yeah, I bet he's going to take Naruto out in one hit. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is, it is, like, stunningly complete how many people are like... Yeah, Naruto fucking sucks. Kurai is, like, so judgy in this episode. She... Yeah, well, I mean, like, I mean, if you think about it, like, everybody knows Naruto as, like, pre-Zabuza Naruto. Yeah, everyone's like, damn, I hope Naruto's not on my team. I don't want to have to deal with that kid. He's, like, a fucking hassle. Yeah, right? Like, yeah, and, like, people weren't watching him in the fucking, in the fucking woods or whatever. Like, the only time anyone saw Naruto in the woods besides, like, his direct teammates, he was fucking knocked out. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that, that, that makes sense to me. It, it is just, like, definitely a thing where, like, it, it feels like they're really hammering that button in a way that feels kind of overwrought to me. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a little bit much. A little bit much. And, like, you know, Kiba then proceeds to hit Naruto once and he goes flying. And he's, like, down on the ground for a while. And he was like, oh, shit, Naruto just lost. <laughs> Holy fuck, did Naruto just die? <laughs> she could take it out in one hit. Oh, my God. But, then, like, Kashi's just sort of, like, watching in silence and Sakura's smiling. And she's like, actually... Here's here's two minutes of Naruto flashbacks. And Naruto stands up and the music just starts going fucking ape shit. Like I They were like like I can't like I cannot stress how much this moment is being like oversold. Like like we get the cut of like everybody in the room making a shocked face and is it like and then they like pop up on screen one by one so the guitars are fucking wailing. And Naruto's like, actually I'm still in this fight. It feels absurd. It feels like a, it feels farcical. Like, I just got... Because all he does is stand back up after getting punched one time. <laughs> Which feels like the bare minimum. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, we already know he's way tougher than that. Like, it feels just a little bit silly. It's a little bit much to me. 
Yeah, and then there was the fucking smoke bombs and the Akamaru. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so those so smoke bombs, like an Akamaru jumps in, the, in there, and like Naruto gets attacked a bunch while he was just standing there. Yeah. Do you want to just like move on to the next segment and talk about the rest of the episode as a whole? All right. Sure. Kiba's worried and confused with Akamaru biting him, but Naruto gives up the trick and undoes the transformation jutsu, only to complain about having to bite Kiba. Another Naruto is standing off to the side holding a restrained Akamaru. Kiba tosses a food pill to Akamaru and takes one himself. They both get way stronger and Akamaru turns red. Kiba uses beast mimicry again and Akamaru transforms into a clone of Kiba. Naruto dodges a swipe and it's clear that Kibas are hitting really fucking hard right now, putting Naruto on the back foot. Kiba uses Fang over Fang and sends Naruto flying. Naruto refuses to give up. Hinata remembers all the times Naruto was kind of a fuck up but kept trying anyway. Naruto stands up and says he still intends to win the match. So yeah, uh, Naruto pretends to be Akamaru and he bites, he bites Kiba on the arm and like everybody's like, everybody's like really turned around Naruto very fast and they're like, oh shit, his jutsu, can, his, his jutsu timings are amazing. He, he, you know, I can't believe he could pull off something so complicated or whatever. Like everybody's like really impressed except for Neji, who is the one guy in the room who's like, wait a minute, he didn't fucking do anything with that. <laughs> he just bit a guy in the arm with his normal human teeth. <laughs> like not even a bare arm. <laughs> He just bit his sleeve. He just bit his sleeve and made him like sad for a minute. <laughs> he got like a mouthful of sweat of like of like a smelly jacket, and that's it. <laughs> 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 like immediately after Neji has that, like it cuts to other people are like, "Wow, what a great trick for Naruto!" <laughs> but you know, it, it does very quickly turn out that Naruto has accomplished nothing because then Kiba does his food pills, and then we cut to. Of course we cut to Choji to explain what the thing that has food in it does. Yeah. It's like, like, come on, guys. <laughs> come on, guys. And, and now Naruto tries to get Kiba disqualified again. Um, <laughs> for, for doping? The, the, there, there was the thing that like kind of stuck out to me in, in this bit where um, where Gekko says that it's fine because food pills are like registered ninja tools. And I'm like suddenly wondering about like... I'm just thinking about the idea of, like, a ninja tool registry and, like, do you think if you're, like, a big village, you can just be like, oh, yeah, you guys are from a small village, like, you, your shit isn't registered, so you, sh- you shouldn't, you, sh- you shouldn't use it, actually, sorry. Uh, you can just kind of, like, bust a lot of the little guys like that. Do you think that's something that happens? Maybe. Like, like maybe it doesn't, like, I can't imagine Rochimaru's like, yeah, here's the, the fucked up arms I put in my boy Zaku. <laughs> Could you just, like, write that down in your list? But maybe it, maybe that's, like, a weird gray area where it doesn't count as a ninja tool. Nobody knows that's not a jutsu. You can't prove he wasn't born like that. You can't prove he wasn't born like that. That is true. Like, there's there's a bit in Boruto where somebody gets disqualified from a tuning exams for using an unregistered ninja tool. So clearly it, like, matters on some level. Yeah. And now I... Now I, I it, it's just one of those things that I don't think there's an answer for, but I'm going to be turning over in my head and, like, just sort of imagining the ways it could be evil. Yeah, like, what is even the registration process? Like, it can't... It can't be too in depth, or you just like give away your whole shit. Yeah, right. Like, imagine there's like probably categories, right? Or it's like, yeah, I mean, you can you can bring a puppet in here. We know puppets. Puppet guys are a kind of guy that exists. Yeah, right. Like any any kind of knife you want. Any kind of knife you want. <laughs> any weapon at all, as long as it's a weapon that is like too. I don't know. It, the, the lines are so unclear. I I need to know about like. I need to know about the guy with like a really shitty jet desk job of like reviewing what is and isn't allowed in the tuning exams. Mm-hmm. It's fucked up. And K- K- Kiba tries to hit Naruto again. I think there's some, like some more really good looking animation in this part. Like, oh yeah, like when he runs on the wall and shit. When he runs on the wall and there's like that, that there's like a sequence that starts when he's like when he like he like leaps up and does the swipe that like cuts off a little bit of Naruto's hair and just kind of goes until after Naruto gets hit by the uh, the fang over fang. Yeah. Where it's like, it looks really good and like also animated by Toshihi Sakaya, the like animator whose work was identified just this week. <laughs> nice. Which, you know, again, again, funny coincidence. Yeah. I love how strong Kiva looks here. Yeah? Yeah, I, I feel like I've been kind of a downer, but you should totally talk about how you, how you think Kiva is cool. Because I, you know, I, I want... Yeah, no, no, no. I just, I just think Kiva's cool. I just think it's cool when a guy is just like, yeah, my trick is that me and my dog like become the same guy. It's pretty cool. I won't deny that. Yeah, and I and I just scurry around and like swipe really hard with my arms. Uh huh. It's it's fun. I I I feel like it's hard for me to be like too amped up about this fight because I remember how it ends. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, like you know, it, it is it is objectively pretty cool as as like a as like a way for a guy to fight. I forgot how it ends until you just said that, and I'm sad. Yeah, <laughs> we can talk about that next week. <sighs> Woohoo! A whole a, a whole entire another episode leading up to that. Yeah. Hey. If if you're listening if you're listening to this now and you don't want to wait, hey, check out our Patreon. The 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 next episode should be up tomorrow on the Patreon. So like you know, yeah. After, after Naruto gets knocked out, uh, Kiba decides it's time to be a fucking bully again. He's just like, yeah, that's right. You fucking suck shit, Naruto, and you're never gonna be the Hokage. Everybody in this room hates your ass, and you're not gonna stand up again. <laughs> yeah, there's no way you'll stand up again. They do this beat a second. I can't believe they do this beat a second time in the episode. And like, in theory, it works better here, but they like play it up way less. No, no, no. The the, the best thing about it is that this one comes after he not remembering all the times Naruto was like a fuck up. It's so funny. Uh, I I do actually like Hinata here. Like, but we'll, we'll probably get more into Hinata. Like, I think next week we have like the, we have the Hinata fight in this arc. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know. Like I. Like there, I, I do like the sense of like her, her seeing Naruto and like she's got her own shit she's going, she's going through and like that allows her to recognize something in Naruto she thinks is like really admirable and like wants to reach out to and aspire for, but she doesn't know how to. Like I think that's like a solid foundation for a character dynamic, and I'm gonna be really bummed out when it basically just gets replaced by like them remembering times they were nice to each other when they were like six, <laughs> as uh, as as Naruto progresses. Mm-hmm. We have to, we have to figure out who the strongest girl is. Yeah, this is, this is another another task we're setting out. Like we need, like at the end of the podcast, we're gonna give up rewards. We got biggest rando. We got strongest girl. Yeah, we got coolest guy. Coolest guy. <laughs> That's gonna be a tough one. It's gonna be a really tough one. Yeah, like what? What? One other thing I want to talk about in this episode um, is mm-hmm. is during the like fl- the flashback of all uh, of all the times Star just fucked up and like him like walking around and being sad. Yeah. Um, I really like the, like the crowd drawings in that scene. They're like very striking to me. Like there's there's just like a bunch of like like pretty distinct looking like guys looking disdainfully at Naruto and they're like rendered in like this pretty like I don't know like like, like there's a really nice stylization stylization on them I just find it really appealing. Yeah, yeah. Where, where like a lot of them like the only definition on the face is just like the shadow. Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah, it's like it's a it's a, it's a cool looking it's a cool looking scene. Yeah, you, you, even if I'm you, even if I'm like. Like I, I feel like we've been pretty negative this week, but there's there's a bunch of stuff I there's like still some little things I like, and I think there's a lot of like pretty good looking stuff in these episodes. I'm still enjoying Naruto, even when uh even when we get a bunch of bullshit fights. Yeah, even when a but even when the show hates all the girls, even when the show like eliminates as many girls as possible in rapid succession. Yeah, I mean I'll tell you what, so far Tamari's strongest girl. Yeah, she's got it. She's got that in the bag. I mean, ha- hands down. Let's let's see if she can hang on to it. I think probably for a while. Probably. Was there anything else you want to cover for this episode? Uh, gee, geez, Louise. Uh, not, not really. No, I think, I think I've said my piece. What are we watching next week? We are watching episodes forty-five, forty-six, and forty-seven of Naruto. Okay. Hey, hey, you listener. Do you like this thing we got going on? I like. I almost responded. I don't listen to this podcast. I just record it. <laughs> Do you want to like make sure we can keep making it? Support us on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Konoha Crush. All one word. Uh, you know, for just like $3 a month, you can get episodes six days early. And, you know, there's other stuff for more money that we haven't, you know, really done anything with. But... Yeah, we're, we're, we're still figuring out what, what to do for bonus content. I think, you know, we, we want to do bonus content, but like we need to know like what fits in our schedule and like what is a, like an idea that excites us. But I, we're working towards that. Yeah. And uh, as, as always, uh, any images we talk about in the episode will be posted on our Twitter at Konoha Crush, all one word again. And, you know, thanks, thanks for sticking around. And remember, there's no such thing as filler.